Hello there friends, long time no see. We're about to start the main stage of PGL Copenhagen Major, only the best teams in the world, but who will emerge victorious? I also remind you that it's the first ever CS2 Major, history is being written before our eyes. But surely we've got some news on the outside, reshuffles, simple again and some more. Then we will discuss the elimination stage, Virtus Pro, and the main drama of the year. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. But first as always, the news. We start with some sad information about Cold Zero. He was just kicked from Legacy, albeit being one of the best players at the Major. Well, okay, a strange decision, but what we can do? I wish only the best of luck to Cold Zero and his new team, if he ever finds one. Next, Bad Boom kicked Dennis and took Magno Jazz instead. Basically, all the rumors were confirmed. They even managed to play their first match with the new squad. They won the game, and the newcomer was basically the MVP. Next, according to insiders, B8's wrinkle may end up in NIP and Hattrick will take his place. In general, it's just a sniper swap. That might have potential to be interesting in the future. By the way, speaking about NIP, you might have noticed some hype that this org has been launching recently. The community got really excited for some big announcement. And NIP took this chance. You remember how Simple used to post pictures of Katana and so on on his Instagram and Telegram and all the people were talking about him joining G2 or NIP. IP because the hints were like obvious. We discussed it in the previous video, so a lot of people really thought that it's going to be simple. But it turns out it's a lot simpler, yeah, pun intended. It's Maxter from Academy. And that's all. Well, NIP, that was a good bait. Thank you. And speaking of snipers, of course, there's another rumor about Monacy in Cloud9. Onkeri during his stream revealed, I spoke a lot with Ilya in Abu Dhabi about Cloud9. Unfortunately, I can't reveal all the info, but I will say this. If Cloud9 comes to an agreement with G2, pays the buyout clause, then Monacy will not refuse it, 100%. He actually has a great relationship with Nico, but there's another player. I can't tell you more. Yeah, another bait. Nice. It turns out basically that Manesi has some internal problems within the squad, and we also see that he's not on the same page with Cloud9. Can we trust Onkeri on this one? Nah, I don't know, bros. Anyways, even though I don't want the Major to end, after we know the winner, the reshuffle stage will begin, and oh boy, that's gonna be rough and sweet. We know Simple, Manesi, Falcons, Ninjas in Pyjamas, Blame F, and all that. That's gonna be crazy and wild. But for now, let's talk about the Major. The elimination stage of PGL Major in Copenhagen is over and there's been plenty of drama and we're not even yet in the playoffs. Anyways, let's discuss the teams and results and we start with Spirit and Mouse, both 3-0. Not surprising for the Dragons, as their shape was obvious and many people assumed so, but Mouse, they came to start the Major right from the second stage and therefore no one could expect such success. After all, it often happens that teams that have already started in the first stage perform better than those who joined on the move. Hence the 3-0 with Cloud9 that many people had in their PCAMs. Nevertheless, well done to both teams. I would also like to point out that Spirit and Mouse both are very young squads. Isn't that really cool for them to go 3-0? That's the future of our scene. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Next, Eternal Fire, Cloud9 and Vitality with 3 ones. The Turks surprised a lot of people. They played all their matches very confidently, beating not just anyone but Vitality, FaZe and Virtus Pro, and only lost to the aforementioned Mouse. Waxek is just awesome, huge respect, and his team plays some flexible CS. Also, as expected, Cloud9 made it to the next stage, and pretty easy. They only lost to Spirit and in the last match they beat Na'Vi in dramatic fashion. And yeah, obviously Boomwich was way too emotional. The last team to 3-1 are Vitality, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but they barely got through, and deservedly. Only luck and willpower did the job, not skills. All because Zaivu played very poorly. Why? Flames answers. Zaivu got sick, he's still sick, and when it's your best player, it gets tough. We did everything we could to get through. Hopefully he'll be back to full strength and feeling good for the playoffs. He's sick right now, but he's still Zaivu. Yeah, guys, without Mathieu, a major is is not a major, right? Unfair competition. Let's just hope he is healed up and fully ready in those four days he has. 
Next, Navi facing G2 with 3-2. Navi even could have gone 3-1 if not for Cloud9. While the other two teams are very unstable, FaZe and G2 had some pretty tense matches and seemed a little nervous. It feels like if they had stronger opponents, they would have failed for sure. I'm sorry fans, but that's the truth. And all the other teams didn't make it. The Mongols are an adorable team with a fighting spirit, but they're not yet a tier 1 at the moment. Also, Furia, one of the most expansive squads in CS2 history, they really embarrassed themselves with an 0-3 and looked much worse than the same Mongols, for example. Imperial and Ecstatic also dropped out, which in general was also expected, to be honest. Neither Neither the experience of Fallen nor the home buff helped. And another team is Heroic. Many believed that they would make it to the playoffs, but it didn't happen, with them losing 0-2 in the deciding match to the Brazilians from Pain, who also dropped, by the way, but with a 2-3. And that leaves us with two teams, Complexity and Virtus Pro. I'll start with the former. Elige, my guy, he had the tournament of his career. He tried to carry his teammates solo on his back, made triples, quadruples, amazing clutches, cold like a genius, but it wasn't enough. And I really, really feel sorry for him. He's a classy captain, a great player, an amazing person, and he clearly deserves a better squad. First, they looked very confident. They beat Heroic and Pain easily and went 2-0, but there's Mouse, Vitality, and FaZe. What can he do? Surely Mouse are unbeatable at the moment, but both Matthew's team and Kerrigan's gang could have been beaten. So, unlock oh, both brother. I personally have a lot of respect for Jonathan, and wish him strength and patience in the future. Also, Complexity's top management promised, however, that no replacements are planned in the future in the team and they're happy with their roster. Yeah, I bet. Well, write in the comments below, guys, what you think about it. And yeah, next up is the juiciest part, Virtus Pro and the main elimination stage highlight. Long story short, overall VP played well in the first four matches. Yeah, they lost to Imperial, but it was an evenly matched game and a best of one. Then, solid wins over Pain and Heroic before a very close loss to Eternal Fire. It was 2-2 and it was clear from the Bears' play that in the decisive match against G2 they could fight on equal terms and even outplay the Kovaches. So it began. The first map overpass was a very hard fought and close game, 16-14 in overtimes for VP. Then we had Inferno, G2's pick, and again a very close one. At 11.10, VP decided to do something unexpected and went to push A. Nah, brothers, forget it. 11.11. Sweat, emotions, nerves, all mixed up. Here goes the key round. VP decided to fake A. The Kovac gang baits and stacks in 4. But hold on, VP are on B. Easy plant entrance. 4v4, Nico dead. G2's best option was to save. But then and He's crashed, oh no, in a pivotal round, he's at the back of the site in the open. That was the opener post one, that's a dream scenario. G2 have been given road to run, can they close the gap? Mir hits his, it's one for one, it's only Flit and G2 miraculously saving themselves yet again. Divine intervention. What? How is that even possible? A bug at 11.11, it's not even a PGL moment, it's pure hate from the fate or the devil or I don't know. Holy crap, it's so tilting. Of course G2 couldn't let him go and won the map. Obviously VP were just demotivated as hell. And guys, what do you think, that's it? Nah, -uh. on the next map, Anubis, VP get another bug right on time. Eyes on fame in the clutch, up into the heavens. Oh, oh man. On. Dropping down. Fame, they're running at him and they're gonna overwhelm him. That's just complete nonsense, gibberish, thrash, I don't know, it's mentally destroying. VP lost to the game itself, not their opponents. And they went 0-8 in the decisive map and didn't show anything else. And of course they didn't, I feel for them. Two bugs in a row in the most important moments, it's just a curse. Maybe if Fame had taken that clutch, Anubis would have ended differently and we would have long forgotten about it all, but no. No, VP just switched off and couldn't recover. Capitalized on the crazy hand that they're dealt. 
And they will lock in a top eight placing here in Copenhagen. G2 are going to the playoffs. Uh, yeah, unbelievable game on that third map. VP broken into pieces and Monacy, man, this guy is not Ilya the kid. Monacy is the man of the house. Poor, poor bears. They're all pale, which is obvious. Getting eliminated from the major, not because you played like crap, but because CS2 is still in beta and PGL is the best TO you can have. And yeah, here's what PGL wrote after the game. We wish to clarify the situation involving James during the second map, Inferno, in the series against G2. A technical malfunction occurred due to an NVIDIA driver crash, resulting in a game crash. We are continuing our investigation into the matter. A lot of people ask why the round wasn't replayed, but that's basically because the damage was already done to a player and it was too long, too far and all that. Anyways, it's what people talk, I don't really know. If you have any theories, write in the comments below. Anyways, it turns out that Jim got blown by Nvidia drivers. Dastan said in an interview that they had three such lags in general, just nobody paid attention to them. Once with Fame, then Mira, and of course the round with Jame, where the game just crashed. Yeah, well, so Manasi was just too emotional and told HLTV that G2 had destroyed VP mentally. He didn't know at the moment about the bug, surely Thorin gave him a hard time about it. No mention at all from Manasi of the utter bullshit that went in his team's favor, we just broke them mentally. Nah, kid, James PC broke, you had nothing to do with it. And surely Manasi had to reply. Everyone understands how bad it is, when it doesn't depend on you if you're gonna crash or have issues with PC. We had the same issue during this tournament, I'm sorry for them. But you have to not give up when you still have a chance even though the worst happened. I hope they fix PCs. Next, in an interview with HLTV, when Monacy found out what happened, he admitted that they didn't have a plan and they didn't want to go to retake, they just wanted to go save. He said, it was crazy, we wanted to save, but Hooksy said, let's save, but see if we kill one guy and then we can retake. So we killed him, and then we went for the retake. I don't know what helped us, but sometimes it happens, this stuff. Someone can crash, or PC crash, or whatever. My friends, can you believe it? I mean, they weren't even planning to retake, and this happens. We're all just shocked. Thorin wrote that he sincerely wishes that CS2 never came out, and this major should have been played on CSGO. Nato Suffix added, What happened to Virtus Pro today was a disgrace. Losing to a PC crash and a bog in the game that everyone knew about but hasn't been fixed for a month is one of the worst situations in CS ever. I mean, he's right. Also, for example, Twist said that the game urgently needs to be updated so this doesn't happen in the playoffs. Kenny is just shocked as well. Crashing in such a big tournament isn't possible. This is totally unacceptable to not have stable PCs. Many crashes since the beginning of the tournament, and it can't be ignored. Simple was short on words. Another important crash, not surprised at all. Major, who already made it to the playoffs, also said, We are in 2024, I wonder if there may be a technology that can put back the players to their exact positions, to the seconds. Not to the round itself, but to the seconds. Well, and Moses thinks that something supernatural is involved. G2 praying to every god in the existence, and one of them definitely responded. And the G2 players themselves understand everything, for example, here's Nico's words. PGL is not the one to be blamed for crashes, this has been happening constantly for over a month, it's freaking embarrassing to have a major with so many issues and bugs in the game. And not to even mention the best of ones MR12 with the current economy, it sucks, hearts out to Virtus Pro. Also, Nexa. Unfortunately, these things happen more often than anyone would like. It sucks for Virtus Pro and Jim that it happened when it did, hope everyone understands it, none of the players are to blame for this. And sure our friendly neighborhood Loba. CS2 doesn't even work on LAN and crashed in the most important round, however, PGL was fast to blame Nvidia without showing any proof instead of saying the truth that the game is awfully optimized. Expected, they can't say anything to Valve, they need another major. 
Thankfully, the community has already made a lot of memes about this crash to keep it in our memory forever from all sides. They're saying G2 was bought by Nvidia recently, that Jame got a call from Taz during the game and more things like that. Some even suggest that Valve should immortalize it with a new graffiti. Imagine if that happens. Anyways, people are outraged, which makes sense. But guys, you know what's amazing? Jame gave several interviews after the game and didn't charge anyone with anything. He said it was all their own fault and it's not a champion's mentality if you try to look for reasons everywhere. The interviews he gave several in English, all with the same message, like they didn't lose because of bugs, they lost because they were worse. And a true champion should not pay attention to that, and on the contrary, they should think why they let it happen in the first place. That's so noble and right. I've always respected Jame, and now I respect him even more. It's a pure captain's act. And people like that. For example, James Banks. Big respect to Jame for this, and all other interviews he's given. True professional. And obviously, people lashed out at G2, like, supposedly they didn't deserve it. But Blay asked them not to. Sending disgusting messages to the G2 players because of what happened is just gross. Be better. Be like Jame. Yeah, guys, listen to this. Be like Jame. And Pimp put an end to all of it in class. I was watching Jame's body language instantly after their loss versus G2 on Inferno. The man stood up, eyes cold, high-fived his teammates and moved on. Don't care what happens from here, but that was a character worth of gold right there. And I agree, I totally agree. Anyways, friends, it's all history now. VP are out because of CS2 and PGL and whatnot, but what we can do? If I were G2, I wouldn't want to win like that, and they didn't want to, but that's life, they just had to do it. It's esports in the end. Thorin, though, writes that now G2 should prove to everyone that they didn't come here for nothing. My friends, the playoffs are ahead, they're going to be wild, crazy and even more dramatic, I'm sure. I just hope with no bugs involved. Like... Ever. May the best team win, not the luckiest. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.